Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Surat video tutorials. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform CITE seek data analysis. So, CITE seek is the abbreviation of cell neural indexing of transcriptome and epitopes by sequencing. So this is a modified single cell RNA sequencing method. In this method, single cell suspension was first incubated with a set of cell type specific antibodies conjugated with oligonucleotide to integrate cell surface protein information with single cell RNA sequencing readout. So the short oligonucleotide sequence including a PCR handle for sequence amplification and a, an antibody barcode. If we see this barcode information in the sequencing data, we know this cell express a surface protein can be recognized by this antibody. So following the incubation, the antibodies will bind to the proteins localizing on the cell surface. Then the cells were washed to wash away the unspecific binding. After washing, cells were loaded into the job seek machine. So after this, the procedure for Data collection is the same as the single cell RNA sequencing data collection. So cells will be nice set in the nicest buffer, and each cell could be labeled by the cell barcode in the droplet. Because the uh, short nucleotide sequence on the antibody has the pony A tails, so it can binds to the pony T tails on the beads. So you can see in this diagram, MRA from the cell will bind to the pony T tails and also the antibody tag will bind to the pony T tail on the beads. Then the beads were purified subject to cDNA synthesis. Then we can get a sequencing information from the mRNA. So one data set was prepared as RNA UMI matrix. We also can get this information for the antibodies. Then another data set was produced as antibody derived text ADT UMI matrix. So later we need to read RNA matrix data into R and also read the ADT matrix data into R. So this is a very simple introduction about the EITE sequencing method. If you want to know more details, you can read the original paper published on Nature Method on 2017. Through the brief introduction, I hope you understand where the ADT data come from. I'm going to use the data set, analyze the more than 8,000 called blood mononuclear cells. So you can download the, the ADT data and the RNA data from this website. And also I'm using the code from this website for today's demonstration. You can copy the code from here. I downloaded the data already, so we can open R. First, we need to note the libraries, Surat, and the tidyverse. So now we can read the RNA seq data in. So you can see in this window we have the RNA seq data. At the moment, it is a large DGC matrix data. Next, we read the ADT matrix data in. So you can see here we have the ADT data now. 
and also it is the large DGC matrix data. So both data set should have identical column names. So we can use this code to have a look if the column names are the same. So column names are barcode. Let's run this code. You can see we got a result here. It's true. So we know now both data set have identical column names. Now we can have a look at the row names for the RNA data set. If we run, you can see uh, the row names are gene names. You can see all the genes have a human hyphen attached to the gene name. This is because when they produce the data set, and they included about 4 to 5 percent of mouse CTC3 fibroblast as a negative control for protein measurement. So in the original tutorial, they recommend to keep just the uh, top 100 mouse genes and also get rid of the human hyphen tag. So if we run this code, we only keep the top 100 highly expressed mouse genes and also remove the human hyphen tag from the CIT seq prefix. So if we run this code, then we have a look at the row names again. You can see now we just have the gene names for the row names. So now we can create a threat object for the RNA seq data. We name it as CBMC. So you can see here we have a threat object now. We can connect the object and have a look here. You can see at the moment this object only have one assay data. So it is a RNA seq data. So now we can uh, also use the assay to check the CBMC object. If you run, you can see it shows here the C is RNA. So next, we can use the create a C object function to create a ADT a C data. If we run this function, you can see here we created a large a C data named as ADT a C. So now we can add the ADT a C data to the CBMC threat object. Let's run. So if we uh, connect the CBMC threat object uh, now, you can see we have two AC here. One is RNA, the other one is the ADT. We can also use the AC to check the object again. If we run, you can see now CBMC has two ACs. RNA and ADT. So we just need to keep the CBMC threat object for the following analysis. So we can remove other data set. So before we continue to our analysis, we can have a look at the information for the CBMC object. So we can Look at the row names for the RNA assay. You can see the row names for the RNA assay are gene names. And we can also see the row names for the ADT assay. You can see the row names for ADT assay are the names of antibodies in this data set. They use the certain antibodies to recognize different immune cells. We can also use the view function to have a look at CBMC data set. You can see we have the uh, barcode in the column for both the data set RNA and the ADT. We have the N count and the N features for the RNA data set and the N count and the N features for ADT assay. 
You can see in the ADT assay, most cells have 13 M features because they use the 13 antibodies. Let's go back to our R scripts again. So we can use the default assay function to switch the assay between RNA and ADT. If we set the default assay as the RNA, then we can check it. You can see at the moment default assay is RNA. We can switch it to assay ADT. We check it again. You can see now the assay is ADT. So we are going to perform visualization and the cell clustering steps on the RNA assay. So we need to switch back the default assay of the RNA. Then we can run the standard workflow analysis. First we normalize the data, then find the variable features, then scale the data. Then we run PCA. After PCA, we find the neighbors and find the clusters. Finally, we run UMAP. Now we are ready to see the cell clusters use the dim plot function. So let's zoom in. So you can see we have 21 cell cluster here with the resolution 0 0.8. So next we can normalize the data for the ADT assay. Let's run this code to normalize the ADT data. So now we are ready to visualize the cell cluster for both ADT and RNA. To see the antibody information, we need to set the default as ADT. So we are going to use CD19 to identify B cell clusters because CD19 is a marker for B cells. We can generate the antibody plot as the plot one and give a title as CD19 protein. Then we set the default as the RNA. Then we generate another plot as plot 2 to see the CD19 RNA expression in the cell clusters. Now we can visualize plot 1 and plot 2 in the same figure. Let's zoom in again. You can see both CD19 protein and uh, CD19 RNA label this cell cluster. So we know cells in this clusters are B cells. We can use other uh, protein markers, for example, uh, CD4 and the CD8 to label T cells. We need to set back uh, the default as the ADT again. Now we generate a plot for CD4 as plot 3 and uh, for CD8 as plot 4. So we can have a look uh, together again in the same figure for CD4 and uh, CD8 protein expression. Let's zoom in. You can see CD4 label this cell cluster and the CD8 label this small cluster. We know they are T cells. So we can use find the marker function to identify both RNA and the protein markers for each cell cluster. So we are going to use CD. 19 is uh, an example again because CD19 is a marker for B cells. So we can run while plot to see which cell cluster express CD19 protein because we know CD19 labels B cells. 
So let's zoom in. You can see CD19 is highly expressed on canister 6. So we know cells in canister 6 are B cells. Then we can use find the mark function to identify um, protein marks for B cells. We can set the identity one as 6 for B cells. If we run, then we find the seven markers for B cells. We can have a look at the protein markers. You can see CD19 is the number one protein marker to label B cells. Next, we can identify RNA markers for B cells. Once again, we set the identity one as six. We run it again. So you can see in this window, we identified 1,435 RNA markers for B cells. So we can have a look at the uh, top RNA markers again. You can see again CD19 RNA was identified as the top three RNA markers for B cells. So I finished the Today's demonstration, I hope my video tutorial could help your data analysis. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button after you watch my videos. See you next time.